Well, we've seen this uh, Ted Wheeler over in Portland, the mayor, just really blaming that this seems to be the the political strategy is just blame somebody else, especially blame the president. Yeah. And you look at the city falling apart and how the president has offered help. And really, the mayor just says all of this violence has everything to do with you. Meanwhile, huge crowds of people are are chanting for his resignation. They're actually, they've been camping out outside of his apartment building. They broke in, they broke windows this week. They set the bottom of his apartment building on fire. His poor neighbors. Didn't he move or was that, it wasn't it, him? He's, that... he's, he's said that he was going to move. I don't know if he's moved already. I would have gotten out of Dodge as quickly as possible <laughs> if I were him. For in but, a Biden's bunker with him. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna burn his whole building. They tried to burn his whole building down. They've put graffiti all over the place. This is a an $800,000 apartment uh, that he's in. <laughs> Which, by the way, if he you're must get a paid public really servant, well. How do you afford that? Right. That's, that's a that's good, a great question, right? That's a very good question. Hey, I even want to back it up with this because this is from CNN. Headline from CNN this week: Portland police declare a riot after people try to start a fire at the police station. Do you know how hard CNN dodges stories like this? Even yes. they wrote about it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> Getting together with your friends. I got, an, I got a great idea. Let's burn down the police station. Really? Let's uh, have a couple beers first to make a night of it, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, Unbelievable. What's going through their heads. And, and the fact that they have, and, and here's the other thing that's happening in the state of Portland, other police stations uh, have been called into action or requested to come into Portland to assist with this terrible situation, and they're declining. They don't want to go. And the reason is because what happens is you arrest these guys, all that, that does nothing. They end up on the street uh, with no bail and n- no accountability. Wow. And not only yeah. that, uh, it's a situation that's extremely dangerous for the police. There's no backup. There's no protection. Yeah. If you actually take action, you're demonized. Why would you want to put yourself into that fire? Mm hmm. You know, several weeks ago or a couple of months ago, when this whole defund the police thing started off, I was kind of on board with the, of course, not defund them, but better training. And I'm still on board with that. Do you know how little training so too. police get? They really get very little training. It's up front. And then after that, you're on your own. And it should be rather regular. And even I think even maybe incorporate some psychological uh, tune-ups in there because I mean, these guys go through at least minor bouts of PTSD along the way. I cannot, I mean, you're seeing a very negative part of society all day, every day, very violent part of society. Mm -hmm. That's got to wear on you. Oh, sure it does. So anyways, I'm, uh, I'm all about being very much against the defund the police movement now. And I'm all about uh, just enhancing. We need, we need to go the other route. We need to enhance our police. They need to be uh, better, probably better paid, better trained. So not defund, no, no, more funding. Well, if you take a look at, let's say, for instance, the the polls in the black community, it's something like eight out of 10 black people that live in black neighborhoods are asking for more funding for the police, not less funding. That's huge. Uh, Why do we not hear that poll in the media? Isn't isn't that interesting how this kind of thing is not in the news? You know, it's it's this is the sad state of affairs that we're looking at right here, because if you just take a look at how things are covered in the media these days, it's it's really a shame because the freedom of the press under the First Amendment is supposed to be a protection for the citizens. But now it looks like the press is beholden to a very strong arm of bureaucratic government and they want to paint a picture that only benefits the political elite. If you take a look at what's happened in Kenosha uh, and the visit that Donald Trump had to Kenosha versus the visit that Joe Biden had to Kenosha, you'll see very different stories where President Trump on every major media channel was portrayed as throwing gasoline on the fire and antagonizing the situation. 
while Joe Biden was painted as the man of peace that's actually going to heal the situation. Unbelievable. It's, He's um, never done anything in his political career. I wish that the press would just report what's happening rather than try to deceive us with their narrative. And that's what's happening over and over again. Really, really, truly is. It's, uh, it's disgusting the amount of manipulations going out there. And if you, if you dig enough, you will find people, uh, we've noted, that will tell you that have left media because of the it's it's all about ratings and blog hits and they're desperate for it because of the amount of competition out there everything our podcast is competition and there's just millions of these kind of outlets blogs and everything else not to mention there's not remember when there was four or five different news outlets uh when we were much younger yeah right and so the battle back then was for, who was the most integrity laden who was uh but it was about who could be the most unbiased direct and give you the both sides of the story so you get right. formulate your opinion and there was a very patriotic uh demeanor behind that because you wanted freedom of the press and freedom of uh, freedom of speech man we took pride in that and meant everything so that we could see all sides of the story and arrive at the best solution that's gone now. well it, and if somebody were caught lying about a story no one would watch that station any longer but <laughs> very true but today lies have been caught many times and it doesn't seem to have the effect that it that it should have no i think that for a large part because uh, we've been divided up into our teams i think for a large part that we actually actively seek out people that support our narrative and if there's misinformation in there it's like well you know we need a little misinformation to counter the other side's misinformation and i and I think all of that is BS. I think that uh, 